Hello everyone, I'm back with another video and in today's video we have an Asus ROG laptop. This is an Asus ROG GL503 VD model. And in today's video I'm gonna take you on a step by step how you can open it up and how you can clean the fan system, the thermal paste and the inside of your laptop. You should be doing your own servicing once every year depending how often you use or how heavy load you put on your laptop. I recommend you guys to do it every years to give it their best in performance for your laptop they do get clogged up really quickly and the thermo page do dry up really often and if you play every year every day couple of hours three hours a day you play video games you should do it every 12 months right, by replacing the thermo page and cleaning your laptop you're not going to change any configuration it's all safe as long as you follow the step by step the, how i show you guys but right, step one is power off the laptop make sure you power it off don't put on a standby you want to flip it upside down and I'll go over the tools that I'll be using. Tool number one is an, a good workshop towel. One sheet of the workshop towel. And the reason I use workshop towel over the microfiber towels is, is the reason for the next tool is an alcohol. And once you put the alcohol right over the towel and you clean the motherboard or the components, the CPU, the towel will rip apart really easy and it will not tangle between the components and damage the board. So that's why I recommend you to use that mechanical towel and uh, this mechanical sheet towel, whatever you call it. All the links for every tool that I use in the video description if you want to purchase yours. This is the 99% isopropylic alcohol or isopropylic alcohol. Don't get anything under 95, at least make sure 95, 98%. You'll need a good screwdriver set. I'll be using an iFix screwdriver set as they have one of the best bits out there. These are made out of S2 class steel bit. That means they will last you many years. We do gonna use a Phillips number zero from the tool set. If you get the pro set, they will include you with an opening tools and some tweezers. If not, grab yourself a guitar pick. A 0.3 millimeters metallic guitar picks are suitable to opening cases and covers. And the important one now is a thermal paste. I recommend you guys to go with the thermal grizzly thermal paste. These are one of the highest brand of the thermal paste, but if you want, you can also go with a Arctic MX4 or MX5, depending your likings. But if you want the best performance, go with Thermal Grizzly and Thermal Paste. But in this case, we're gonna be using Arctic MX4 as client requested. All right, with all this on hand, let's get it started. If I miss anything, I'll let you guys know. All right, and first thing first, on the bottom of the laptop, you're gonna remove this single rubber leg in here. So stick the guitar pick in underneath and just lift it up. Has a double sided adhesive. Put it to one side. Remove the single screw right underneath. Put it right beside it so you don't mismatch them. Put the opening tool right at the gap in there and lift it up just as much as you can stick your finger right underneath. And then you want to bring it up, move it around, wiggle it around, and it should release the service cover. You can take it outside, wash it, let it dry, clean it up. Now, we're gonna disconnect the hard drive right in here, lift up this flip thing, pull it upward, untangle it, bring it to one side. In here, we're gonna remove this screw right in here. And we're gonna remove this screw right over here. And we're gonna remove this screw right by the jack where you disconnected the hard drive. Once you remove this one, now we're gonna go ahead and remove the screws all around. The two screws in the front corner, these are the short ones, and this is the medium screws, and the rest of them that is all around, these are the long screws. So go ahead and remove all the screws and keep them in one in a separate part so you don't mismatch them. Also, if you guys like my videos, if you want my videos helpful and helping you guys out, you can support the channel by clicking the like and subscribe. I'll greatly appreciate it. It helps and motivates me to make more videos, take requests, and answer your questions in the commentary. I appreciate that. All right, almost done. So I'm keeping the screws in a different pile so I don't mismatch them. All right, once we remove the screws, now what we want to do, you want to grab yourself the opening tool. Oh, where did I put it? I know it here. And you want to stick it between the bottom cover and the palm rest right there. And you want to just wiggle it around and you want to see this gap open. You want to wiggle it around. And you want to hear that big click sound, that's what you want to hear. Work around on the sides. 
go to the left and right side. Then you should go to the back corners. In this side, let me see by the USB ports. I'm not taking the whole guitar pick, just the one or two millimeters. Once I do the sides, oh, it should be okay. I'm just gonna lift it up, move it around, grab it from here and lift it up and it should come out. Be careful, don't drop the hard drive or I mean, don't bang it because it's a mechanical drive. You shouldn't uh, hit them hard. All right, now we can take outside and clean the mesh. Oh, another tool that we're gonna be using is a toothbrush. An uh, old or new toothbrush to clean up the dust mesh right underneath. So clean up the dust mesh right underneath. All right, next step is to disconnect the battery. To disconnect the battery, we're gonna put your finger there at the side of the jack right in here and pull it backward and the jack will get disconnected right away. Make sure you pull it back evenly. All right, and after that, now we're gonna start disconnecting the stuff. And uh, we do wanna use a tweezers uh, to remove this gaffer's tapes that are taped right over. Okay. Remove the gaffer's tape. We're gonna just pull up this thing for handle, whatever you call a handle to for the LCD display cable. Put it to one side. The fan connector. You don't want to pull on the cable at all. You want to put the tweezers on the side of the jack and you want to gently push it backward like that. And it should disconnect the uh, connector. Okay. And the gaffer's tape in here that is put it right there. And we're gonna go on this side. Lift up this gaffer's tape, bring it here, the connector for a fan connector right on this side. Same thing. Lift it up. Now we are gonna disconnect the fans. There is two screws on this one and two screws on here. So remove the fan screws. The fan can come out pretty easy. And this is what I'm talking about. Look at that plugged up dust right in there. So that's why you're getting overheating problems. So we're gonna do the same thing on this side. Uh, if you don't wanna repaste, you just wanna clean up and just open at least to clean up every eight months to remove all this dust, particles, everything that is, is stuck in there. Okay. Now once that one is done, we're gonna remove the bracket for the, the three screws for the CPU and three screws for the GPU. And the GPU screws, they have a little spring on them. And they should have a little seal lock on them so it doesn't let them come out entirely. But this one came out, no idea why, but the seal lock didn't hold it. There's a tiny screw right in here. We're gonna remove this screw too. And we're gonna lift up the heat sink, bring it like that, and there we have it. And the thermal paste, it is dried out. These thermal pads, I'm gonna go over the thermal pad heights if you wanna use and replace them. These are 0.5 millimeter thermal pads, 0.5 millimeter thermal pads. These are 0.52, these are all 0.5 millimeter thermal pads. And this one is a one millimeter thermal pad. So one millimeter, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and 0.5, if you wanna replace yours. But these ones are pretty fine, they are nice and cushioned, they are not ripped or anything like that. So I'm gonna take it outside, use a compressed air, not a can air. I'm gonna use a toothbrush and clean up this one and clean up all the dust in here. And I'll be back and we can just do the repaste. All right, now that I cleaned up the dust system and the heat sink and the fans, we are gonna clean up the thermal paste. To clean up the thermal paste, we are gonna grab a one sheet of the workshop towel and we're gonna soak it in in an alcohol. And we are gonna rub over the CPU 
And if you grab every bit of thermal paste, nice and clean. And the reason I always say use an alcohol and the workshop towel is because the tiny components on the GPU don't use any other towels except the workshop towel to clean it up. Otherwise, you're going to damage the components. Because as soon as I rub this one over with enough alcohol in the, on top, you can see the towel it rips apart, it even has a tiny hole, and it will not damage the components. Okay, and then simply you just want to grab a dry part, nicely clean up the crystal dye right on the CPU and GPU. Same thing, we're going to clean up the We are going to clean up the heat sink. There we go. Now all you want to do is put a tiny line on the CPU and one drop right on the GPU in the middle. Don't worry, it's just going to spread around. It's not conductive, so don't worry about like, if I pull too much or too little. So as much as you put like that, that's enough. It's just going to spread itself around. Right, grab the heat sink, bring it down, and I don't see the C lock on this one. You see, they have a tiny plastic C lock. This one didn't have it, one it fell off, I guess, but it's not important. It's just to hold the screws in place. So I'll put this one right on top, and we are gonna screw down the CPU first. You start from the corner side on top. It does, it did have a C lock, so the C locks for all these screws are out. So yours might have a C lock, so you just want to press down on it. So I guess because of the overheating, the C locks are made of the plastic, that's why it just got loosened up. And put the other screw right between the rams. Don't forget that one in. Now we're gonna grab the fans. We're gonna bring this one. This one was for this side. Or was it? Yeah. So I'll put this fan right in here. And put the connector for the fan. It's slide it right inside the jack and pinch it right in there. Put the two screws for this fan. And put the other fan right in there. It goes like this. They twist it up. I don't know why they're twisting all the fans. Now this fan shouldn't be like that. It was just like this. This kind of work, this one has to be like this, okay. I put that one in there and first bring the connector, put the connector right through. I really don't like this because this fan sticks out, they put a tape in here. I don't know, this is a horrible design. They didn't want to design a fan for this one, they just grabbed the same type of fan, they just inverted it. Like yeah, honestly not a good thing to do. Put the other screw for this fan. Once we're done down here, pretty much make sure the fans are in place. We have the LCD connector. Bring it down and push it right into the connector. Make sure evenly push it down, it clicks in. Now, once we are down here, we are almost set to go. We're gonna connect the uh, uh, battery. The make sure the battery connector goes in straight inside the connector. Doesn't go in sideways. Has to go in all the way straight. Once it's in there, you want to grab the bottom cover with the hard drive on it. You want to grab it, bring it up straight. 
And you want to just push down the corners. Grab the three screws right on the caddy here on the bottom service cover. And this screw right over here. And this screw right at the end. And then zigzag this cable right in the grooves. Bring it down and push it right in there. And last thing down here would be to just grab the bottom service cover, put it on top, squeeze the corner, make sure it clicks in, nice click sounds. Don't worry about pushing it down. Put the tiny screw right in there and then grab the rubber cover and stick it right in there. And the last thing is to just put the rest of the screws. Remember the longest screws at the back, the mediums are in mid front and the corners are the short ones. I hope you guys like this video and helped you guys out. If you have any questions or requests, feel free to leave them in a video comment. I'll try to answer them as soon as I can. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video. Just going to finish up putting up the bottom screws.